We've brought this programme to a few places now and the audience always love, I think they always particularly love the Frank Bridge actually, mm. um, but the Britain is also surprisingly accessible and it has five movements, all of them are quite short and all of them have a very specific character, so one of them's a march, one of them's a dialogue, one of them's an elegy and it's very a very visual piece and I think it's immediately very, I think immediately quite accessible even though harmonically it's technically not, it's quite difficult, but audiences seem to react to it well. It's always really, really nice playing with Esther. We've been playing together basically from this the start kind of thing when we were very, very young. So there's a kind of trust and understanding which I think means that there's a maybe extra freedom when we come on stage to um, express ourselves in a spontaneous way. We listen to many, many different styles of music on CDs and in the car and on the radio and things like that. But I don't know, for me, classical music always, I was always drawn to it and particularly the sound of the cello. We all started with the piano. And I think at one point, maybe when I was eight, I started the violin and I said, I want to be a pianist and a violinist. And my mum said, you can't really be a pianist and a violinist professionally at the same time. Um, and then I just liked the piano more. I started playing the piano first, and then the violin. Um, and I, I mean, my experience with the violin wasn't so positive, let's say. Um, and I remember watching a concert of an orchestra, it was like a youth orchestra, um, playing in Nottingham, and just being really excited by seeing the cellos and hearing them for the first time. And so, yeah, and then I wanted to start learning the cello instead of the violin, and enjoyed it from the start. to two very, very good state schools in Nottingham and they were good in the sense that both, in both schools the head teachers really, really appreciated and loved music. I remember coming into um, assembly in the morning in primary school listening to Yo-Yo Ma play the Bach Suites and we'd all walk in and in silence and then we'd have like Vorjak New World Symphony and so music was really actually a big part of my school even though it wasn't a, a music school and we didn't pay um, fees or anything like that. I start a lot of my practice just feeling the instrument and finding all of the different sounds, kind of improvising in a sense. It's, um, it was made in 1700 by um, Matteo Goffrilla. Um, and I've, had, I've been playing on it for not for very, very long, um, so it's a fairly new instrument 
um, to me, but it, yeah, it just has such a special um, depth and darkness to the sound, which I really, I really, really like. <laughs> The whole, I mean, that's not the full range of the instrument. Of course, there's more that it can that it can give, but you can already hear just from from that the range. It's something you don't really realise when you're a child. We have parents, teachers and schools which just really supported us. So it's only in adulthood when you look back and you're a bit more aware of these things that you notice. And now we just try to bring more awareness to that. We, we try to play in schools and hope that people see what we're doing and see themselves in us and also feel inspired to play. The more diverse um, range of people you have in, in classical music, the art will just grow and, and so many wonderful things will come from that. There's so many talented, talented people that simply don't have um, the opportunity to express themselves in the arts because of because they don't yeah they don't have the chance and they don't have the money for example and so um, yeah to widen that access will be yeah we'd see such a, a positive change and I think everyone would benefit from this. Every child should have access to this education and it seems so obvious what it can do for you as a person in terms of confidence and the ability to express yourself and also the unique thing of combining something that's a physical skill that you have to concentrate on with something that's very direct and emotional. What can be done? I mean, very simple, give everyone access to, to music education. Of course in reality there's many things that need to change in terms funding. of funding is, a, is, is one of the big things and it just being valued and not seen as a added luxury I think that's the main thing. Well if governments prioritised it then the schools will be funded as they were in our parents day when everyone had free music lessons at school that that happened in in their time so it's definitely possible that was only what 40 years ago. <laughs> I see myself as someone who has the potential to inspire other black people or other females or other young people, but I wouldn't limit myself to just that. I'm a musician as well, I see myself. I guess the first that would come to my mind would be Bob Marley and Jacqueline Dupre. They would be my, yeah, the, the artists that I listen to the most and feel I've been um, influenced and inspired by. My parents were very keen on showing us people that we could be inspired by when we were younger. So we used to watch lots of documentaries of Muhammad Ali and, and we were really, um, yeah, we listened to, listened to a lot of Bob Marley and um, watched documentaries of the um, West Indies cricket team and seeing, you know, people like that really, really inspired us. I did a, an arrangement of a Bob Marley song. Um, which, that, I mean, that particular arrangement just came from sitting at the cello and I was like, oh, this could work. We had the same, the same influences and we watched the same documentaries, mm -hmm. so the same. Although I'd probably also add Marta Argrich and Vladimir Ashkenazi to the pile uh, and Rachmaninoff, specifically from a piano perspective.
I think this is a misconception yeah. that should be changed. I think classical music is music. It should be expressive. It should be exciting. It should be accessible and enjoyable. And we shouldn't feel restricted or held back within the art form because, you know, the composers that composed these pieces were real people with real lives and real emotions. And that's what they're putting into the music. So it's our job to express that fully. If I'm playing a Beethoven sonata, I'm not going to start dancing and, <laughs> and play because that's not what the music, that's not what the music says. And you want to encourage, yeah, encourage the focus of the audience and for them to be drawn to what you're doing with the sound and what's happening in the harmony and, and, the, and, the, and the phrases and the character of the music. And, and um, I think I feel that I, I move in, a, in the way that feels natural to me um, in response to the, to, to the music and the gestures that always come from, yeah, what I feel in, in, in the music.